Okay, what's up everyone? So I'm back with a voiceover for this back workout. I've got a lot of things I wanna cover in this video, uh, so just excuse me if I talk a little bit more quickly than normal. Uh, I've got a lot of papers that I wanna get through, uh, so let's just jump right into it. Um, I kicked off this workout with one arm lat pull-ins. The basic idea with this exercise is kind of the same as kicking off my last workout in the last video uh, with hamstring curls. Uh, it's just meant to be sort of a pre-activation thing, uh, get the lats warmed up, establish a mind-muscle connection with the lats so that they'll be more active for uh, subsequent exercises. Um, also, you guys will notice that I'm laterally flexing my spine here, so kind of crunching to the side, and that's because the lats do act synergistically to laterally flex the spine. I would recommend just kind of experimenting with that and seeing what it is allows you to feel your lats the most. So after the lat pull-ins, it was on to lat pull-downs. And the main thing that I wanna talk about on this movement is grip width and the style of grip that you should use to optimize lat recruitment. Um, so there are three papers that I wanna look at. Uh, the first one is by Lusk et al, published in 2009. And they had four groups, wide pronated, wide supinated, narrow pronated, and then no narrow supinated. And what they found was that regardless of the grip width, the pronated or overhand grip led to more lat activation. Um, so from this study, we can kind of conclude that overhand is better than underhand when it comes to recruiting the lats. The second study I want to look at is by Signoria Tau 2002, um, and they looked at a bunch of different variations on the lat pull down. Uh, so in front of the neck, behind the neck, neutral grip, and so on. Uh, and what they found essentially was that the wide grip to the front of the neck was the best uh, in terms of lat EMG activation. Uh, so what this study tells us is that pulling the bar down in front of your neck is probably a little bit better than behind the neck. And then the third paper by Anderson et al, 2014, will help us clarify what grip width is the best for recruiting the lats. Um, so they looked at three different grip widths, uh, a narrow grip, a medium grip, and a wide grip. Uh, all pronated and defined by biacromial distance. And biacromial distance is just the distance between the outer part of one shoulder and the outer part of your other shoulder. And what the paper looked at was three different grip widths. So one, 1 1.5, and two times biacromial distance. And what they found was that 1.5 and two times biacromial distance were best at activating the lats for the eccentric contractions only. Uh, so all three grip widths were very similar for the concentric contraction, uh, but wide and medium were best for eccentric. Uh, and then also the biceps were most activated at 1.5 times biacromial distance. So if we're gonna draw anything from this study, I think it's that uh, middle grip is the best for activating optimally both the lats and the biceps. These three studies combined together, I think indicate that maybe the best way to train the lats is through a pronated grip brought to the front of the neck with a middle grip. Uh, so 1.5 times biacromial distance. And you'll see that that is basically what I was doing uh, in this exercise. And then one more thing I want to note there is about cheating. Um, so an article from which I pulled a lot of these studies referenced a paper in which an 11 degree lean back was better for um, optimizing lat recruitment than staying completely upright with no lean back whatsoever. Uh, so as long as you're not using too much momentum, uh, slight cheating on the lat pull down is actually better for recruiting the lats. Moved on to a close neutral grip lat pull down. And the basic idea here is just to train the lats through shoulder extension. First exercise trained primarily shoulder adduction. Here we're bringing the elbows down more to the front of the body. And of course, shoulder extension is the other primary function of the lat. So training a slightly different movement pattern. A couple advantages here, you get a little bit more range of motion. You probably get a little bit more trap and rhomboid involvement, especially if you squeeze the shoulder blades together. After that, I moved on to chest supported T-bar row. And the reason I'm doing this is first and foremost, just because it does give my back a little bit of extra support. It also prevents cheating. And I actually found this to be very interesting. Um, a 2004 paper by Lehman et al. found rows to be just as effective at recruiting the lats as lat pull downs, but they were actually better for trap and rhomboid activation. Um, so if you wanna get the most bang for your buck, I think having a row in your routine is an absolute must. So after the T-bar rows, it was on to a variation on the moto row. Here you set up the cables 
quite low, and I use my forearm as a brace against my knee, um, and it, it definitely, I feel a really good stretch on the lats in this one, and I find that the range of motion is really, really good as well. And unlike with the dumbbell, I find with the cable, you do have a little bit more of a constant tension uh, curve, so um, I just find this to be a really smooth movement. And then what I do is after I do 10 reps half kneeling, I'll actually perform the rest of it lying, uh, which gives me a very strong contraction in the lats. And I'll usually bang out another, say, six to 10 reps in this position. So next up was Smith Machine Shrugs. Again, it takes a little bit of pressure off my lower back. Now, some people with this movement will say that it's probably not a very good upper trap exercise because Johnson et al. 1994 found that the upper trap fibers actually run transversely. Um, so they don't run more vertically like we used to think and they don't actually attach at the scapula. So they can't function as scapular elevators. Therefore, they're probably not very um, they're probably not contributing very much to the shrug, I guess is how the reasoning goes. I don't take this to be a very strong argument. I think that other studies, for example, Anderson et al. 2008, um, in which they cite three other studies uh, to show the same thing, um, found that shrugs actually had the greatest EMG activity out of all the exercises that they looked at for the upper traps. And also, I think that it just makes sense to include shrugs in a program, even if maybe they aren't hitting the upper traps per se, uh, they're at the very least hitting some of the other scapular elevators, such as the elevator scapulae. And you know, since any program is likely to include things like rows and lateral raises anyway, uh, it just kind of makes sense, it's relatively low risk to include a shrug. Um, and a shrug is something that I do feel in my upper traps. If I just simply shrug up, I can feel my trap um, contracting. And so uh, I know that it's working something. So this was the final movement, it's full range of motion, lateral raises. Uh, I actually heard about this movement from Ian McCarthy, and I think he uh, got it from Menno Henselman's, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but in any case, um, it is a little bit of an unorthodox movement. You want to be very careful with it and go very light, um, as impingement, I think, could be a risk. This might be one of the best uh, burns, <laughs> if I can use a bro term, uh, I've felt in my upper traps in a long time. Uh, for whatever reason, I just feel like the squeeze at the top of this exercise is so good. So yeah, if you haven't tried this one out uh, as an upper trap exercise, uh, I'd strongly recommend it. And so the last back movement of the day was chest supported incline shrug. Uh, so this is one that as far as I know, I invented. Uh, I haven't ever seen anyone do it anyway. Uh, and as you can see, what I'm doing is basically shrugging both up and back while having my chest braced against the chest support. I find this to be really effective at hitting the mid traps and the upper traps. And again, it's from a slightly different angle than what you'd get with the uh, upright shrug. And it again, also completely negates any cheating, which is really, really common in the shrug. You'll see people go up onto their toes or duck under the bar to get it up, and you're not really getting a whole lot out of that. And finally, the last movement of the day was a simple alternating dumbbell bicep curl. As you would have seen, I just did a, a lot of rowing, pull downs, etc. Uh, the biceps are very active in these movements. And as I've said in previous videos, I do find that by the end of a long back workout like this, uh, it is difficult to give it your all for biceps. And so in the past, for that reason, um, I've either done them at the beginning or given them their own day. Uh, in this case, because of my injury, I'm trying to prioritize back as I feel as though it has flattened out a little bit as a result of having taken a couple of months off from training it. So so yeah, put the back work first and then finished off with four sets of 10 to 12 each arm bicep curls. And that was a wrap. Uh, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this informative commentary. Uh, if you did, please let me know and I will keep it up for uh, my next training session, which is going to be a push day. Uh, and yeah, if it's popular, then I'll keep doing it. Thank you guys very much for listening and I hope that you enjoy these next few clips. Um, so thank you guys again for watching this vlog. Uh, if you're enjoying the videos, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. Uh, that does help me out a lot when I know that people are enjoying the videos. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you in a couple days.